what is going on cardano community welcome back to dap central my name is farid and in today's video i'm joined by the co-founder sven from an upcoming cardano project called forion so today we're going to be doing a deep dive into what this particular platform is going to be bringing to the ecosystem sven how are you doing today I'm doing good, Farid. How are you? I'm doing good. It's Friday. I'm ready for the weekend. You know, we're going to be talking <laughs> about Forion a little bit, getting to know you guys better. So I'm excited, man. I'm sure you are too. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Not a problem. I've been looking forward to this for quite a bit of time. You guys popped up on my radar very recently. And since then, I've been e eager or itching to find out more about exactly what you guys are doing. So I'm sure that the community is excited about this as well. But before we jump into the actual interview, let me just briefly break down the agenda for the viewers, and then we're going to go ahead and get an introduction from you, as well as an overview surrounding Forion. So as a part of today's video, we're going to be touching on an overview of, what, of exactly what Forion is. And following that, we're going to be talking a little bit more about betting and prediction markets, as well as some of the tech behind this platform and exactly why they've come on Cardano. Following that, we're going to briefly touch on the security of the platform and exactly what we can expect, as well as the future roadmap and development for this team. Now, another hot topic surrounding this particular platform will be regulatory compliance, as well as competitors, not only within Cardano, but as well as outside of the ecosystem. And then in closing, we're going to talk about use cases, adoption and growth, as well as some challenges and opportunities that this team has faced. Sven, how does it sound to you? Sounds good. Let's get going. All righty. So without taking up any more time, Sven, do you mind giving us a little bit of information about your background, how you've come into the space and exactly what Forion is? Yes. So my personal background is uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've uh, founded uh, companies in web, even offline web two and uh, and this is the first project that I'm actively involved in uh, as from the business side in terms of Web 3.0. Um, and our network, Forion Network, aims to be the centralized prediction market platform and we built on Cardano, as you correctly mentioned before. Uh, our mission is be uh, to be transparent, trustless and user friendly. Um, so I think that th those are big goals uh, when you look at what uh, currently the traditional markets are like and we want to include fields like sports finance politics and entertainment and make them bettable uh, with cardano funds so um, if you think about it you could say uh, we want to uh, so if you look online for example twitter twitter the the, the, the market of twitter is opinion but the opinion is just there and now we want to add to the opinion also uh, that you can put money behind it let's say so whatever opinion you have whatever like topic you're discussing is hot for you it might be sports might be finance might be politics might be entertainment um, or might be something completely different um, you might want to say okay let's bet like I'm, I'm, I'm very certain and the other one is very certain too. So let's see uh, how, 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 it comes, uh, um, how it comes out. So that's our plan here and to create a platform that uh, offers to do such thing. Got it. I appreciate that. And that's a very nice summary there. I think the example that you gave, a lot of people can definitely relate to. I've definitely taken out bets before. Now, what's interesting about this is that you guys are doing this on the blockchain. So I think that's going to be the new aspect to this and the kind of spin you guys are putting onto this platform, given the fact that blockchain utilizes an immutable ledger, right? So all of this will be visible online. It's not going to be immutable or it's not, it, it, it is going to be immutable, excuse me, in the sense that people won't be able to actually change the results afterwards. And again, it's going to be open for all to see and open for all to interact with. So let's kind of dive in a little bit deeper into prediction markets themselves, right? So what are some of the key features and benefits of using a platform for these purposes and basically for what Forion is bringing forward? Yes. So let me start a little bit, a uh, little bit before that with traditional markets or, or even 
let's start with a personal example. So there is the way that uh, I'm just virtually shaking hands with you right now that we are not going to take more than one hour. And, you know, you say, well, we are going to take more than one hour, whatever. And then we, we bet for five dollars and, and we settle that. Right. So that's the, you know, the easiest way of betting. And uh, then there is the bigger scope of betting so you have this betting companies um we have something like w win or bet and win and and, and all those players and those are very centralized so it's 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 one player who owns the market and and you you it's a black box you cannot see what's happening inside there it's a lot of sporting uh, bets um and um because it's very centralized we see a lot of you know trust issues like um, for example, you win, but you don't get paid. Uh, like if you if you look into the forums and the complaints about those um, uh, betting companies, you will see a lot of a lot of complaints, and with it comes trust issues. And if you even go further, it it even can become shady. So uh, I don't know if you uh, if you watch the Peaky Blinders, for example, but um, so a betting field traditionally has even like mafia background because uh, they they used to, for example, um, uh, manipulate horse bets and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's very ugly. And um, if you think about the, the vendors or the market itself, even though we have it uh, centralized, but the, there are millions of vendors uh, in each country. And so you have the same game of, maybe some two um let's say the nfl you have two teams uh, playing against each other but there is a in bangladesh there is going to be a bet uh, uh for those teams and there is liquidity for that bet in bangladesh with which doesn't add to the us liquidity so okay it's like split up in a way right and then you have um traditionally high fees because it's very profitable it's like in a way gambling it's unflexible. It has like limited uh, offerings. So some offer only sports, but there's no political betting. I could on, I could go on for an entire day, right? So what do people want in this day and age, we think? And uh, we got to um, put our research behind it. And, and we're just starting up with the community. We, I, I come to that later, is that you actually want to get less of, uh, of a let's say overly structured uh, betting and centralized betting, but you want to be decentralized. Maybe we want to have a bet. Maybe we want to have a bet about a certain topic, which like no uh, big company cares about, but we do care about it. And we want to give the, we want to see it just like any other market. We want to give it back to the people. Okay. We want to have a decentralized uh, platform um, without relying on a centralized authority or intermediary. Okay, so we are going to um, to um, um, yeah put the market together, and uh, with that it um, becomes trustless. That's our our goal there, and the risk of manipulation and fraud goes way down. Okay, so decentralization is one of uh, one of the goals. Um, Second one will be uh, that user creates markets. We have to see in uh, which phase it's going to be the case, but I think this is the uh, one of the biggest ones for us. So the decentralization um, means that we have to trust one entity that gives us the truth about whatever event happens. So let's say we have two arbitrary NFL teams and who says that Team A won. So we have to integrate um, oracles, for example. In, in, in this case, that's a blockchain term for, let's say, injection of truth of the world into uh, the blockchain ecosystem. But I can touch on that later as well. So, um, yeah, it, it comes with a lot of challenges, I would say. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I think one key part that you mentioned that I like about what you guys are doing is you guys are letting the people drive the market, right? Instead of you guys establishing and saying, hey, this is exactly what's doable or what you can predict on the market, you're going to kind of start it off with obviously a few, I think, key categories, but let people really drive what it is that they want to predict on. 
I think what we see right now with decentralized entities is the fact that they're kind of setting everything up and then you can choose to participate in it or not. Whereas you guys are taking a more community driven approach by again, letting the community drive what it is that they want to predict and what it is that they're interested in. So I like that aspect of things. Now, there's a few things I also want to touch on, which one of them actually is Oracle. So I'm glad that you brought that up. We're going to be touching on that here in just a minute, but let's kind of back up a little bit and let's just talk about blockchains in general. You know, so mm -hmm. you guys are building on Cardano. I'm just interested as to why Cardano and what about Cardano kind of stuck out to you guys in your analysis or initial research that made you want to build here? Yeah, so uh, Cardano happens to be one of the blockchains that fascinated me for years. So even before I got active in the, or I should say active in the uh, crypto world, I was following it, let's say privately, right? So, uh, and what, was striking me about it is that it has a long-term vision and this also is the reason why we chose cardano because our visions align very well so one of it being the community uh driven but one of it uh very particularly and it, it's it's very simple but it's the price right so uh, i remember when i first uh, tried a, a, a d app which was uh, kind of similar to this I tried to fund it with a wallet and I purchased some, I don't know, $50 of, of Ethereum and uh, 40 of them went away in fees or something like that. I, I don't remember the exact numbers. Right. And I was thinking like this, this, like, this is not a, a future. Th this cannot be the future financial system. So, I mean, Ethereum has changed a lot, but um, even then uh, Cardano was one of the ones uh, who, actually said that uh, they want to have this very stable and very user-friendly, let's say, and they want to be the, um, to become the future uh, financial system. So it's uh, from that very simple standpoint, it was a good entry, but we also find different things uh, that, uh, that are good about Cardano. So uh, we believe it's very scalable. Um, for, especially with the upcoming developments uh, that they have now with the payment channels and stuff. Um, it's very secure. It's, it's architected to be very secure. They, they, they spend a great deal of thoughts about, you know, creating it very secure. Um, looking into the future, it's going to be interoperable. Okay. So uh, as I said, we want to be or to become the platform where everybody can place their uh, predictions, okay? And uh, I don't mind if somebody is on the Ethereum, uh, in the Ethereum world or in any other world uh, out there in the blockchain because his use case might be better taken care of on the Ethereum or in any other blockchain. This is not right now, but we have to, we have to, agree on a blockchain that has the same future vision. And so as we grow and as we uh, become bigger and more used uh, and become more, um, we, we get more ideas of, about how to grow bigger. We need the infrastructure to do so. And Cardano, in our opinion, does that very, very well. And uh, just to mention two more uh, in this regard. So, uh, Cardano also um, works on something to um, to get identity down, so decentralized identity did, and uh, the native governance, and then uh, the aforementioned payment channels. So, for example, identity. If we do some, let's say, if we want to go down the gambling route one day, we might have to verify that you, Farid, are 18 years or older. And uh, there are ways that uh, I can verify that without knowing your actual age. It's just like, yes or no, 18, yes or no. So those are really cool things that uh, make us look forward to build on Cardano. And on the other hand, we don't see significant disadvantages. So why not roll with it? Great response there. And when I tell you, I can relate so much to your very first point. One of the, the, the first things that happened to me, I came into... Um, 
Ethereum and I went through the same exact process. I tried making a transaction and I realized I lost about like a third of the funds I was trying to send solely in gas fees. And so <clears throat> following that, I'm like, okay, there's got to be a better way for me to, you know, interact with blockchains. And I came into Cardano and just like you said, you know, paying pennies on the dollar to, you know, make multiple transactions go demo. Okay. This is a lot more affordable. And then once I had that barrier broken, I started to look into the tech. I started to see this is a much more young ecosystem, you know, Ethereum. I always explain this to other people like this, like Ethereum is, is a city like New York with skyscrapers already built. Cardano is, is in the process of just laying the foundation, you know, and we're a third generation blockchain in the sense that we've got Bitcoin who's first generation. We've got Ethereum who came right after, you know, second generation with smart contracts. And then we've got Cardano who's coming in behind both of those, learning from their mistakes, iterating, and then really launching some novel tech now. So once I really understood what was going on, it was a clear choice for myself. And it seems like it was for you too. You know, I just want to touch on one other thing too, when it comes to, you know, the adoption with Cardano staking, you know, something as simple as staking. Yeah. You look at how simple it, it is on Cardano, but you take it for granted. I've been looking outside of Cardano, you know, not only comparing against Ethereum, but also other networks, which include um, Avalanche. And I'm, I'm realizing what we have here is a gem, no lockup, the ability to move funds around as, as, as fast as we want, you know, everything being done on the network again is, is amazing. So to see that those are the same reasons that you guys are coming here, I'm excited to hear. And obviously you mentioned, you know, payment channels, Hydra and all this stuff coming online with Voltaire, you know, governance. This is what we want from a blockchain. So awesome response there. I'm excited for what you guys are doing and I'm excited that you guys are doing this on Cardano. So let's dive into a little bit more about Forion and then we're gonna kind of take another step back and talk about security and future developments and things like that. But you've kind of touched on the problem, right? Which I think you mentioned was high transaction fees, limited accessibility, right? Where we've got centralized authorities and geographical restrictions, but then there's also lack of transparency. So those are the kind of three key issues or the key problems. Now, do you kind of mind touching on the solutions again, right? I think you talked about you guys using blockchain, leveraging, um, the security of Cardano and what we're building here, but can you kind of talk about the integration of JED USDT and what you guys are doing as a whole mm -hmm. to fix all these issues? Yes, so um, I think the, the 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 central mechanism of the uh, decentralized predictive markets that we're thinking about, and probably most of the listeners will have come up with that or uh, by now, is the smart contract, right? So by using smart contracts to settle markets, uh, we eliminate the, the third party, the, the one who actually decides, okay? So it happens automatically. And it sounds like so normal. It sounds so logic, uh, logical, but uh, it's actually a big deal. And if you look into the old, into the old days, so, um there have been cancellations so after the fact the market's gone out of of, of place and, and and such things so manipulation in the broader sense so we want to eliminate that altogether using smart contracts so okay how does the process work altogether so you start to go to the website you see um let's say a market that you want to participate in let's stay with the NFL game. So you want to predict uh, the outcome of the NFL game. You click on that and then you have to, um, you have to place your bet uh, according to the, uh, the betting ratio that's, that's uh, right there at the moment. So let's say uh, team A has a 30% and team B has a 70% uh, win chance by the other participants, by the way, it can be completely different from other betting operators or anything. So, and then you can buy shares accordingly. So uh, one share um, would for team A would be uh, 30 cents on the dollar and the uh, for the other team, it would be 70 cents. Okay. So, and let's say you decide for team A, you want to buy one share. Okay. Now you have to, like, where does the money come from? Now you can fund your, uh, your wallet with uh, ADA or um, JET. Uh, we're thinking about more uh, coins as well, but let's keep it simple for now. So ADA will be the 
Cardano native token and Jet is the, I think you could call it native um, stable coin on Cardano. I know there are more, but uh, we, we wrote that in the beginning. And so let's say you, per, or you fund it with Jet, you can right away uh, put your 30 cents for the one share in place and then you wait. So let's say uh, game night approaches and uh, it's clear that the other team loses a player because of he, he has an injury or whatever. So it equals out to 50-50. So now you have already made 20 cents. Um, if, you sh if you sell your uh, shares right now, or you can still wait until uh, the game has ended. And if the team, uh, 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 um, yeah, if the team wins, uh, if team A wins, you get 100%. So you get 70 uh, plus, right? So you only, um, uh, you invest at 30 and then of course it goes up to 100. So that all happens within the smart contract and we cannot manipulate it anymore. So if we don't like team A, for example, we cannot say, okay, like let's cancel this or something like that. Right, so it's it's like a security for the user, and they can see that it happens that way. And um, if we look down the road, of course. So first of all, we're going to test it in such things, and uh, I think we're going to touch on that later. But um, in the future, we also want to have an audit about this, so that an external party looks at it and, and confirms that it's actually true that uh, the payout hap uh, is going to happen. And so we have a truly decentralized market, just like you go out and uh, go to, to your market uh, locally and buy something and pay it cash. You know, it's, it's just like that. It's like the most simple way to, uh, to interact. And we want to bring that back and, and take all the intermediaries out. I, I really like that. And one thing that I completely missed here is that you don't actually have to wait for the decision to be made in order to make profit on your, your prediction, right? So what you just mentioned there right. is somebody potentially sh selling their share as news develops surrounding the market prediction. In my head, I was thinking about it like black and white where it's like, I'm coming in at the 30 cents a share and the only time that I'm able to make profit is once the actual prediction market has closed and the final decision has been made. But you could potentially come in at an early stage of the prediction you know, and as things and events change, which that's normal, right? Leading up to the actual final prediction being made or being decided upon, you could then sell some of your shares along the way. So a really cool part of the process, again, that I was not aware, and hopefully that kind of adds more to the to the viewers watching this as to what is actually capable here with the platform that you guys are building. Now, that kind of touches on security again, um, recapping the fact that you said you guys are going to be leveraging smart contracts, which allow for us to have everything happen pragmatically where human emotion is not involved. You know, like you mentioned back with the mafia, I'm sure that people would be very frustrated if something goes against them. And now they have incentive to kind of game the system or to game the market in order to get their funds back. So I think that's a, a key part of this process. And without that, everything else in terms of trust and um, verifiability really kind of falls to the wayside. So thank you again for that wonderful example. I kind of want to touch on another thing here. And then, you know, I know um, you guys, are... go ahead. Can, I, go can ahead. I add one more thing? Yeah. Uh, so by the way, Cardano itself wants to do the same for the financial system. So to give you, um, there are uh, claims also by, by the way, Ethereum and Bitcoin be your bank. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've heard that one before. So I, I really like that vision. Will it come to fruition or not? I don't know, but be your bank. Like I can invest my own funds. I can, you know, I have like my private keys, my coins. I, I don't put it, by the way, if you put money in the bank, it's not your money anymore. I, I, I only learned that, you know, like they don't teach me in university. I, I, I was in the finance. I, I studied finance in university. They don't teach me that. So it becomes a liability of the bank, but it's not my money anymore. Can you believe that? So. While uh, being on Cardano, it's going to be and stay your money. And, and this is like, it's so important. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think, honestly, as a side tangent here, that is why we're seeing so much regulatory crackdown on crypto. 
because people are now <laughs> waking up and understanding it's my money. I have custody of it. I'm in control of it and nobody can take it away from me no matter what happens. As long as you're a good steward of your seed phrase, those assets within that wallet are completely yours. Now it's up to you to use them for good, but if you use them for bad, you're also liable for all of that, right? So you can no longer blame anybody else when you come into the space of crypto if you're doing it in a non-custodial way. Again, keeping your own uh, seed phrases, keeping your own assets, not leaving anything on exchanges. But to kind of put all that in a bow, I think that's why we're seeing so much crackdown on crypto is because people are finally waking up and the banks are finally realizing that people are taking their money out of the bank and putting it into crypto where the bank no longer has the ability to pull the strings on that money. You know, you talk about fractional reserves and how banks operate, right. you know, it, it, it makes complete sense to me now. And I wish I would have realized the power of crypto and what it could do, you know, five, six, seven years ago. I was still in college. I was worried about completely other things or completely different other things. But now I understand and I can see why some people are scared of it. And again, why in countries, for example, like um, in Europe, they're now putting limitations on how much you can withdraw, but they're also putting limitations on how much you can actually spend on crypto exchanges. Now, when I heard that this was submitted to me by one of my um, watchers here on the channel, I just connected the dots. I'm like, OK, I see they're scared of us pulling out our money from the bank. And they're also scared of us investing in crypto because nine out of 10 times that money's not going to come back into the bank. So, right. Again, just a side. And tangent. rightfully so, right? <laughs> Out yeah. of their perspective. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I think they, they've gotten so used to operating that way. It seems foreign to them now that people are understanding. I don't have to be a, a product of you guys. I can go ahead and actually do this for my own. But again, I think with that, comes responsibility. So when you do own your own crypto, when you do own your own keys, you have to be careful in how you manage it and how you watch it. Because again, now you're susceptible to anything. And if something does happen, there's no FDIC involved, right? So it's a very fine line. Uh, but again, we didn't get on here to talk about regulations. I just had to say that there. So let's jump back into Forion. <coughs> I want to quickly touch on future developments. Obviously, you guys are still building. You guys are somewhat new to the space. Can you kind of give us an idea as to what we may see in the future? You know, what are some of the ideas kind of floating around in your current meetings about development as to where you see this platform going and what you guys can implement to really enrich this platform? Yes. So future developments is a is a thin ice because like it's it's far away uh, and um, you know we want so much and uh, right now we focus more on what is the what gets us going okay but okay let's speak about future then nevertheless um i think the most important again is the community and the user experience that like community and uh, to to cater for the community we want to enhance the user experience and that's going to be very 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 important throughout the entire future so there is no Okay, now it's perfect, right? So it it, it also uh, always has to improve. And then of course we want to add new features. Um, first of it being like the, the most important one we've touched on it already is that the users themselves can create markets, and and with that comes known sets of problems. For example, if you and your buddy decide to um, to create a market about whatever what the um, what the restaurant has for lunch today, right? there's not going to be enough liquidity probably in, in order to satisfy that. Right. So, um, but nonetheless, it's, it's a really cool market. Like maybe you, you enjoy to, to bet on such easy and simple things. And also like probably nobody else wants to see it, just you and your body. Right. So, um, creating own markets and, and creating, uh, a wide set of variety, let's say, um, will come with its its own set of problems. But we're like absolutely um, motivated to, to get this down because I think that really there is a lot of value for the for the users. Then, of course, we're um, thinking about partnerships and integrations, so becoming more widely adopted, becoming maybe the predictive market space of all of crypto world. I mean, that's a very, very big goal, but uh, let's dream big too. Um, integrations, maybe we, we, can, we, we even think about like 
legacy providers can integrate us or uh, let's say you become your own stand. So you just operate on our network, so to say, and, and you create your own set of bets and, and create liquidity and so on. And you can tap on something and, and you can even profit uh, from being the, is it bookmaker? Is, is that the term? Um, so that would be an interesting idea too, right? Uh, then we, of course, uh, the whole notion of control is, yeah, is, is an ongoing topic, right? So who's going to control it? And I think um, just like Cardano, you can see it very well. There, there need, you need some energy to get it going. And then as soon as the community is involved enough, it will do more good to the ecosystem than if it was a, uh, a dictator, let's say, uh, leading, leading it alone. But you cannot start off of the community right away because there is no community. So uh, this is the whole notion of governments, community involvement. And as the project ma uh, matures, we plan to introduce some, some DAO cent decentralized government uh, governance system or something like that. Um, and then uh, new use cases. So, uh, for example, betting and buying shares. Uh, I've, ca I've come across about a very interesting uh, idea uh, that was way before this. But the, in, in France, uh, people were not buying tickets for the subways. Okay, so they, they got on the train and every now and then they, they found out they rarely get fined. But if they got fined, let's say they had to pay 50 euros. So one clever guy came, uh, came up with the idea to create an insurance for that and to say, okay, everybody pays, let's say 10 euros a month into this insurance. And if he gets fined, he will get it out of the insurance. So everybody doesn't buy tickets no more. Okay. So this is also like, what is it? Is it betting? Is it insurance? It's, it's not really insurance in a traditional sense, right? But it's like, okay, we have an outcome of a certain, uh, of a, of a certain nature. And um, there is a, a ratio involved, like how many in like, I write 10 times and I get fined once, for example, or something like that. And it could also be um, solved with this platform, if you think about it, right? So uh, exploring new markets and use cases. So uh, I think we touch on that deeper later, but um, regulatory compliance, if you think about it, you, you like the internet already has the problem, right? So um, we, we had this conversation about our logo earlier. So if you take our logo and use it without our permission, you can have like in Europe, you can get fined for it because copyright infringement, but in the US, it's already completely different. And maybe even in some states, it's different than in the other states. So how to be compliant answer in the internet and even more on the blockchain, it's, it's really hard to do. So um, we have our own plans there uh, and how we pursue it. I'm going to detail later about this, but it's of course uh, a very high priority for us to um, to be legal and to be able to operate uh, within a legislation um, without restrictions, let's say. Got it. Uh, I'm going to kind of work backwards here. So on that last point, I think that it's critical that you guys are legally compliant because that's going to help you guys build trust within the community. Without that right. trust, you're not going to get that adoption and growth. Now, going back to your earlier point, touching on more or less the future development of things, I think that the iterative approach is the best way forward. I just got off of a call with another member. Um, his name was Jan from the deep funding team within the um, Singularity Net ecosystem. They're an AI platform that helps to fund other projects. And he said one of the things that they really adopted in terms of a motto is build fast and break fast, right? You don't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and hundreds of man hours to dive so deep far down a rabbit hole only to find out at the end that it doesn't work or that it doesn't meet your users needs right and so their motto is to literally get things out iterate and just continue to figure out what works what doesn't work with the community with them all along the process so 
I'm interested in, this is something I, I, I would like to get your take on, you know, as to how a test net and a main net rollout is going to look like. But again, mm -hmm. I'll give you a second here to respond. The, another thing I want to touch on here was when it comes to usability, you guys have posted some demos or some demo screenshots, and I actually highlighted them in one of my previous videos, but the user interface looked very simple and very clean. So I have to give that to you guys. I think you guys are off to a very great start. If you guys are able to really implement and roll out a platform that looks just like the screenshots you guys have shown so far, I think it's going to be very easy for people to adopt. Now with that, you also need to be careful though, because you don't want to mislead anybody and make it so friendly and so easy to bet that people then, you know, just kind of take it lightly because at the end of the day, this is a very serious matter. Your ADA, your, your Jed, your, your assets are involved here, right? So I think it's a very fine line that you guys walk in the sense that you want this to be as user-friendly as possible, but in the same breath, you also wanna make sure that you guys have the guidelines or the, the railways to make sure that people don't take this as just any platform that you can use, right? This is another protocol managing, or I assume that will be managing hundreds, if not thousands of dollars with, within a particular liquidity pool, within a particular market per se, right? So. Again, I think you guys are off to a great start. There's definitely things that you guys, I think, have to be very clear cut about because some people, I think, are very polarized by prediction markets, right? So I, I want to be fair. I want to be transparent. And I'm sure that you guys understand the kind of market that you're in, right? And so the very last thing I want to also touch on, too, is what you mentioned about you guys potentially being able to be leveraged by others, so imagining almost kind of like a software as a service platform where you guys kind of build an infrastructure, but then you guys can also kind of house other markets that may already be out there that don't necessarily want to shift away from what they're currently doing, but maybe they want to also provide that little, that level of transparency to their user base and say, okay, hey, we could potentially leverage Forion's, you know, smart contracts or some kind of API, whatever technology you guys are putting out to kind of have that be the backbone to their platform where they can still kind of feel like they're in control of their community that they've already built. But while you guys are also giving them a little bit of a service and it's almost like a win-win situation. So I know that that was a lot to break down there. What are your thoughts and responses to that? Uh, yeah, thanks. I mean, you, uh, you, you pointed it out very well. You said uh, we have to be very responsible and that's true. This is a, a big, um, a big question that uh, gets us, uh, that follows us, uh, us to bed and gets us up in the morning as well, because like betting, gambling, as I said before, it's a uh, very yeah, res responsible uh, field. So uh, one idea we had, but it's uh, we, we don't know how we could do it is like, for example, some play money notion, right? So that uh, that you can participate without uh, actually involving your own funds. So we could um, create a token for that or something like that. So. Uh, I don't want to go into depth because it's 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 not part of the vision at this uh, at this stage. So in general, we what we want to do is uh, to have a very um, yeah to educate people about what they're doing there and to to take it for fun, but also to give them the opportunity mentioning those uh, insurances, for example, to actually save on money or let's say sports betting where you don't have to give away a big cut. So if you, if you engage into sports betting $5 a weekend, right, it, it doesn't hurt anyone. But um, if you give, give away already $1 when placing the bet, of course, uh, it's lost, right? So uh, we want to give the people actually the opportunity to, to um, yeah, make their own sane decisions about it. Um, but the details are going to be juicy. Uh, you're, you're very right about that, yeah. Um, and the interface, uh, I think the, the user adoption comes with ease to use, right? So what's, what's, what's Apple's um, success story is that they, they made it so simple. They, they created the home button. There is no back button. No, there is the home button, right? So, um, and I mean, the tech, we could argue at day and night, but uh, I think... Um, uh, that's that's what Apple can do is the design and everybody squeezes the Apple example all too much. But I just want to say that the the simplicity of use the UX is very very important. And since we have the opportunity to keep it very simple, we're we want to take advantage of that too. 
And so um, at this stage, we don't even need to have a um, KYC registration, something like that. We, we will need to see it when it comes to regulation, if, if we have to do it at one point, but um, make fast break quickly. Uh, I like that principle, although we cannot, um, I mean, we are going to do it in terms of front end and those things, but for the smart contracts and back end, uh, I think Cardano has shown that it was a good idea to wait a little longer and, and make it really proper <laughs> and uh, to, to test it out very well. So yes, the, the design probably we, we can run some tests, but uh, for the back end, this is a no, no, and we have to get proper code out and uh, yeah, the, the trust is the most important thing. If, if 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 your next video is going to be that uns were lost, oh my god! Like <laughs> we can shut the doors, right? So this cannot happen at all, and we must make sure that uh, we're um, we can be trusted at all times. So there is no moving fast there. Yeah, uh, well said, and I think the the trust factor spans way outside of Forion, right? I think any project you look at Dexes, yeah. you look at DeFi, you look at Metaverse, you look at NFTs everything comes back to trust right and it's easy to 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 lose that trust it, it's hard to gain it back right so i'm ha i'm happy to hear that you guys definitely have that at the forefront one thing that i want to touch on which you just kind of touched on there with you know some kind of um paper trade or something like that to kind of get your feet wet i'm not sure if you're familiar with um think or swim so this is a platform that people use at least here within the u.s to trade stocks. Now, before you can actually get access to the full application, they've got like a paper trading thing where they basically mm -hmm. set you up with, you know, some test funds. And essentially that's a test net, right? That's what we have here on the Cardano network. So maybe, you know, getting people access to the test net and saying, hey, you know, you need to do some kind of trading here and not trading, but you need to do some predictions at least and, and get a sense for it before you jump in. And obviously you can't force people, but at least, at least having a platform there so that way they can play around with things literally and not feel as if everything is on the line, I think will be key. So again, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the details and some of the rollout information that, that you guys will be releasing surrounding your testnet and your mainnet launch. But I think it's gonna be an interesting platform given the fact that there isn't a lot of competitors within this current space. So that's actually gonna be the next topic I wanna jump into. It's gonna be competition. So right now, and when you guys, like I said, popped up on my feed, I had not realized that we don't actually have many of these platforms at least on Cardano that I'm aware of. So can you kind of speak as to the market research and what you guys have seen when it comes to prediction markets on Cardano and within the broader crypto space as a whole? I'm, I'm not going to mention any specific uh, any, any specific competitor, but of course, um, the, the first thing that um, tells us, tells uh, what, what you just said that tells us that uh, there are successful competitors is that there is a market. Okay, this is the most interesting thing, the, the most relevant thing for us. Because if somebody said some time ago uh, that uh, if, there, if, if the product you want to develop is not there, then it's not a good product, most probably. Okay, there are exceptions like the iPad or something like that. But uh, if you think about it, Facebook was not the first. There was MySpace before that, at least. I was aware of it and, and probably some others, which, which kind of failed, but then Facebook made it. So um, that's yeah, very, uh, very important for us. Then next thing is that we, of course, we observe what they are doing. And I think that each competitor has a like different vision. So the one wants to, is more in the market. The one is more in the user usability. The one is more in the decentralized. So for us, it's, it's more important since you, you also mentioned that the ecosystem is very, very young, right? You said New York uh, uh, and then compared maybe, I don't know, Singapore came behind it and, and you see how it grew in like just 60 years. Uh, it's insane. Or Dubai, for example. And if we want to um, be similar to that, um, we, I think we have to follow our vision and find our share in the market and actually create our share in the market. There is no, like, if we think about the pie, never mind, man, you can have it. Like the pie right now is like, it, it's almost not there. Okay. In, in terms of prediction markets. 
it's uh, we don't even have to compete about it because it's like it it, it cannot feed people but it will it it will grow up it will um uh, inflate no not inflate uh, this has a notion of uh, no it it will grow so much in the next years like not only prediction markets but the dap space in general and the blockchain space in general as people get ideas about what problems to solve with it and then uh, th i i guess that's part of it and and the other part is that um th they they find ways now you have software development kits now you 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 get the opportunity to actually use it so the user friendliness of um networks in general become better and better the integration the adoption and so on right and um personally i think ada is right now at whatever 40 cents so i think right now we are in a in a space where nobody cares about crypto much honestly out, outside of the space right like i don't know if like your uh, subscribers go grow a lot at, at at this stage but the next wave is going to be massive it's going to be a massive adoption wave when because many cool projects built at this stage and it's going to be of course a wipeout again and and everything that happens but it's just like the 2000s.com bubble like there there was no amazon around I, I i remember when when i bought first time on amazon it was for books i bought a book there and it was for books you, i want to buy a book i go to amazon and then they grow into like a logistics global uh, retailer uh, no uh, is it uh, global lo logistics um uh, giant right so i think that um when it comes to competition it's more like let's let's build together honestly they're going to copy from us we're going to copy from them and it doesn't matter like there's there there's space for everyone and um of course uh interesting for example there are some interesting Mm, projects that also have open source their uh, their smart contracts we're carefully reviewing them because why should we like solve the same problem twice or reinvent the wheel right so we're of course uh, looking into that um, we are of course looking what what works in terms of U ui ux um yeah and of course we are also going to take advantage and and this is a a, a different thing the blockchain in space evolves so fast that we now have technologies at our disposal that that weren't around like even one year ago or two years ago like even smart contracts if you think about it smart contracts on on cardano are not around for so long so right now we have a unique uh, time uh, to uh, leverage uh, such advantages and then there are going to be ones after us and and they're going to attempt the same so yeah for us it's a it's a very uh, let's say co competitive in terms of sport like uh, we're competitive on the field and then afterwards we, we drink a beer so if, if somebody approaches us well we're going to have a talk right yeah I, I like that attitude and I like the fact that you mentioned that we iterate off of each other I think people and it's funny now you hear about it after the fact <clears throat> with, for example, Cardano wallets, right? Last year when wallets were coming online, nobody was complaining. But now you look at it and people are saying, man, this space is oversaturated. <laughs> There's too many wallets. Why do we need to keep building wallets? Well, the space is maturing. You know, I think just like what yeah. you were saying earlier, as more people find out about prediction markets, the opportunities that are available, the space will mature. Now, what does that mean? That means more, more competition, more new entrants into the space, especially as the barrier to entry begins to lower, right? You were talking about technology and how we have access to things now that weren't here last year. Well, that makes it that much easier for the next person to come along, just like how Cardano was able to come right after Bitcoin and Ethereum and figure out problems that those other two platforms are trying to figure out in their respective time. So I think it's a natural process of progression, which I think is to be welcomed, right? It, it forces you to stay on your toes, especially if you're one of the early market leaders, because you can't sleep, right? You, you can't be like, oh, well, we're the first prediction market and we got 99% <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the pie and now we can just go to sleep. No, people are going to come behind you. They're going to see what you're doing. They're going to do it and try to figure out how to do it even better. So I, I completely agree with that statement that you said earlier. And very similarly, 
we saw a DEX wave, right? Where we saw MinSwap and Muesli Swap being the first launchers. But then we now have, you know, Wing Riders and MinSwap right behind them, literally making sure that they're staying on their toes. So nobody can get comfortable in this space. And I think, you know, it's for the best. It's going to force you to be better and it's going to force you to really be in touch with what you're, with what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to get passed up. And so I wanted to just touch on that there. And another cool thing, too, is open sourcing. We've seen projects most recently talk about open sourcing their work, right? We saw Meld. We saw the Indigo Protocol basically put out their code for the community. And it shows you they're not scared, right? They want people to right. look at what they're doing. They want people to be able to leverage that. And if maybe you figure something out that they didn't, that they didn't you know, at least you're using their code and they can see, okay, well, we help somebody get to where they are. But again, it keeps everybody honest. And it's a mindset that the rising tide raises all ships, right? So there's just so much opportunity in this entire space that I think that there's more than enough room for everybody to make it, like you said. So I completely agree with, with your, your statement there. Yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, well said. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we've kind of touched on the technology, the security, future developments, regulatory compliance, and competition. We've already touched on use cases as well. I want to maybe just quickly dive into some of the specifics around the Forion platform itself. You guys have an upcoming token sale, which was just released actually uh, within your uh, pitch deck, which I covered here on, on my channel. But can we maybe kind of touch on the utility of the governance token and exactly what you guys are planning on doing as well as the token distribution. I mean, I know that that's a lot of questions there, but I was highly impressed with the tokenomics for this platform, given the fact that over 50% of the tokens would be going towards a public sale. And you guys had about 10% going towards the team, which is much less than a lot of the bigger protocols that we've seen launching within the space. So I think if you guys are able to stick to that value, that again, it shows that you guys are not really a selfish team and that you guys are not necessarily doing this for yourself, but you guys are really looking to fundraise and again, put something out for the community to use. So you want to touch on any of that there again, the public sale, the tokenomics and utility. Yes. Uh, so we mentioned trust before, and I think our key cornerstone is really trust. And so uh, Charles Hoskins is has impressed me with similar attitude and he he kind of um, touched on the tokenomics of of cardano back in the day and said that uh, in in many uh, other blockchains the majority goes to the team and and is is held by single entity multiple people let's say five heads of 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 some blockchain and, and and you never know when they are going to dump for example and, and and such things so um i think that our big big potential lies in the long term we we're not here for uh, sail and fly uh, sa yeah sail and fly but um or pump and dump game for for that matter but we want to create something that establishes itself in the community so by um, putting out many tokens, we we allow many people in the contrary to have skin in the game, right? And to to care for 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 the project and to to buy in. And um, so, as I said before, in in terms of the cake, if the if the cake is one million and we share it, uh, we you get five hundred thousand, I get five hundred thousand. Um, we share it with two, let's say we share it with 10 people, but it becomes 10 billion, whatever, right? So we all of us get more, even though we shared with 10. And now I can ask myself, okay, why we got the other eight in? Well, why, why should I ask myself? Because they also contributed and we must make sure that uh, that, that happens. So uh, with the Forion token, we, um, we want to achieve two things. Uh, we want to achieve that uh, liquidity is going to be provided. Um, and we want uh, later down the road, uh, have a decentralized autonomous organization governance, uh, those things uh, to happen as well. And if, uh, if you're an early adopter, if you're a long-term holder, or we might uh, give opportunity to stake, um, that's all in the planning right now. So um, you're going to be uh, g getting advantages if you support us that way. Let's, let's put it that way. And that's the plan. And 
the more the merrier. Uh, I think, as I said multiple times, there is enough for everybody. And uh, this is going to be, I mean, we're in the, we're kind of in the fun space, right? We're placing bets on something. So let's, let's, let's make it fun as well to, uh, to be part of this project and, and get it flying. Well said, well said. And we, we are coming up on an hour and five minutes. So you're going to be owing me a couple of bucks here. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing. Yeah, I'm just give playing. Me, give me your wallet address. <laughs> well, 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 we never shook on it. You see, not, not, that's why we need ah, smart right. contracts. Anywho, uh, just kind of jumping back into the tokenomics here. I see Dow governance, which, which you've touched on. Thank you. Uh, there's also rewards or incentives. There's going to be a buyback program. And one thing that caught my attention is going to be the collateral. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that you'll be able to use the FRN token as collateral um, on the actual platform. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yes. Uh, although I have to admit that uh, my co-founder knows, let's say, the specifics about the tokenomics. So I want I don't want to get in hot waters men mentioning a detail wrong here. Um, we will make sure that we put all of it correctly and uh, in a detailed fashion into the material we put out, and so everybody can re read up on this. And if you um, if you have questions or uh, want to engage, please join our Discord channel as well. So we're going to um, announce everything and discuss everything there. Uh, so uh, there is like all crystal clear in the end. Fair point. Fair point. So I think in closing here, Sven, again, I appreciate your time. There's two things I want to just briefly touch on and then we're closing it down. So I want to touch on adoption and growth in terms of what you guys are planning on doing to get more eyeballs and, you know, the marketing side of things. And then the very last thing I want to touch on is going to be challenges and opportunities that you guys have faced so far. So jumping mm -hmm. into adoption and growth, you know, how is the project working to increase adoption and grow its user base right now? And what marketing outreach strategies have been successful so far? I think I've seen you guys on Twitter. You just mentioned Discord, but what else you do have. you guys have? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what else you guys got brewing up in the background? Okay, so as I mentioned right now, it's it's not a hot crypto summer uh, at this stage. It's it's maybe spring, just like it's it's a real spring right now. So um, right now we are focusing on the actual communities that already exist. So if you read from us, you you know what you're getting, right? So you you kind of oh this is interesting, and then you you keep reading. So what we focus first is to get some to get our voice out in the um, in the crypto space, so not beyond that. Um, and I think it makes sense because at this point, we the, the, the platform is not online, so it cannot be used. But the next step is going to be that it's going to be op uh, operative and it's going to be fun to use, right? So uh, we're going to continue showing up on podcasts, spreading the word, but also getting people to refer and to show other people to show your friend hey this is really cool like place your bet and uh, let's let's do something together and to to have um, a user growth from inside out and as we are doing that we're uh, planning to move into the wider space of of people and we're currently planning on how to do it uh, let's say uh, I don't know what the term is, but do you know Harry Potter? The when you're not a magician, there's mug, Muggle or something like that. So muggles. to to Muggles to the normal people, we want to reach out at that point, uh, at, but only if they can use the platform already and um, and can have fun with it, and they it provides utility to them. Um, besides that, we're of course create. Uh, keep con keep creating content on our own uh, channels that being discord twitter uh, and our website of course um we are thinking about influencer collaborations and yeah speaking to in and out of blockchain um space uh, to people public relations to a degree so just spread it out right away uh, and uh, yeah i mentioned already user incentives so I think the strongest way, and it's funny enough, also the cheapest way to grow is to uh, give the users themselves the incentive to spread the word 
and um, we want to like the incentive could be okay like here you got five dollars roll with it but I think the incentive should be that it's a really cool platform. So that's what we're aiming at. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, word of mouth is king. Um, and that's everywhere yeah. in terms of marketing, right? When you can have somebody vouch for a platform without them necessarily having to do it, it really builds a sense of trust, especially when, when it's coming from somebody that's close by. So I think that's like the angle. Um, and obviously all these projects within not only Cardano, but within crypto are looking to kind of um, take advantage of that, right? Reputation by by others almost. Now, one thing that you mentioned about marketing, and this is what I'm personally seeing, is that as projects get closer to testnet and mainnet dates, they should get a lot more eyeballs on them, right? Because they've got more tangible products. So I think the fact that you guys are right now still in the building stage it is a little bit hard and it's not just for you it's any project that's building right but as you guys get more tangibles and as you guys get more out for the community to really start to play around with the eyeballs and the marketing will be inevitable right so i definitely plan on covering you guys here on the platform again i want to make sure to do it in an educational fashion uh, but i do appreciate your time here and jumping on and breaking all of this down for us again i just found out about you guys not too long ago but I was completely blind to what you guys are doing and what this particular space has to offer within crypto and the fact that you guys can leverage blockchain and all of the features that blockchain brings to launch a platform just like this. So again, congratulations to you and the team. Thank you guys again for giving Thanks. me the opportunity to bring you on and educate my community about what you guys are building. So the very last thing I want to touch on, and I'm going to let you go here, is going to be challenges and opportunities. Yeah. So go right ahead, man. What have, what have been some of the challenges and what do you guys think of opportunities coming soon yeah uh so i think the regulatory challenge uh, i've already mentioned and touched on that before um it's it's really going to be a challenge and how we are going to address it is uh, first putting something out um more or less regardless and then figuring out what are first the biggest market and what are the easiest markets <laughs> right so and they, they might go together, but they m might not. So let's say, for example, we figure out that the biggest market for it is going to be the US. We might pay um, uh, people top money to enter the market. And then let's say Montenegro has no regulations at all. So we launch in Montenegro right away, right? And, 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 those, uh, and maybe France is going to be later because it's like complicated or something like that. So... Uh, that's uh, that's the plan there. Uh, the second one is scalability or adoption um, in in general. So adoption is the the front end side. So more users come in, and scalability is like our backends can they hold up? Uh, is it um, um, working as expected? And this is a big thing that we don't think too much about right now, um, but it's going to be definitely a big big challenge. Um, then, of course, competition, like if, if somebody is fast and uh, uh, coming into the market. But I, as I said, I think it's quite sporty at this point and we're going to have our space there. Um, and yeah, I talked about successful competitors. They, they paved the way in a way without like us cannibalizing them in the, in the first place, right? Um, then, of course, we got uh, a lot of opportunities. And the first one is probably the expansion of the Cardano ecosystem. So um, if just recently with the JET stablecoin emerging and, um, for example, a lot of uh, smart contract languages uh, becoming, yeah, more mature, I would say, um, and more and in, 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 many things uh, hydra and, and and so on and so on so there are many things in the in the pipe already out but people start to adopt it and, and start using it um it's it's really cool opportunity for us to to see what comes down there even from other community projects um then of course the integration of other platforms so I think the next year or years are going to show which blockchains are going to prevail for mm -hmm. example, Luna, right, right now, like nobody talks about integrating into Luna, but maybe two years ago, it would have been a big deal, right? So um, it, it can be that, let's say, Ethereum, Avalanche, and Binance Smart Chain, and like two or three um, big players emerge to be the winners for one or the other reasons. And uh, we're going to look into um, integrating 
uh, integrating with those platforms uh, or the, the, those blockchains, or even, uh, as I said, offline, let's say there are big uh, players in the market and they want to use our tech, maybe integration. And then new markets and use cases. So as I mentioned before, the uh, one, one idea is uh, insurance, but it comes with their own regulatory um, challenges, right? So we don't want to, um, to, to be too early uh, with, with, with sh such shots. But those things are on the horizon and, and those are potentials and we might make them into opportunities. So um, all in all, I would say we're committed uh, to overcome the challenges that we have and, and to seize the opportunity. And it's, it's a really, um, we just recently, uh, I had a Twitter space last week sometime and, and uh, a developer reached out and, and gave us really, really uh, good insights. So I think that the opportunities are much outweighing the challenges at this point. I mean, the, the challenges that we have, like, like getting the product out and everything, like not to mention that, but the external challenges that I'm, uh, I was mentioning. So um, it's, it's really cool to be in the Cardano ecosystem. The, the community has been very, very good to us. It's, it's yeah, very friendly, inviting. And um, we are going at this point, um, uh, we're, we're getting more out of the community, uh, striving to build something that gives back to the community and, uh, and makes potentially other projects happen as well from, from what we've built. So um, yeah, it's for us, it's a great outlook at this, uh, at this point. Wonderfully said, I think this is going to, I think number one, put prediction markets on people's minds. Um, and number two, if it's able to, you know, assist people in some other kind of way, like you talked about assisting existing businesses, you know, it's a win-win for everybody involved. Now, one thing that you touched on that I want to kind of touch on as well was launching in different areas as you guys see fit when it comes to regulation. And this was when you're talking about challenges, right? We've got other platforms like Meld who are doing DeFi where they're trying to take crypto into fiat, right? In terms of loans right now, it's a lot of platforms doing crypto to crypto, but they're looking to kind of do something brand new that the space hasn't seen with crypto to fiat loans. And so they've already established the US is not the right place to launch, right? So they're gonna be launching that portion <laughs> yes. of the protocol in Europe first, and then rolling that out to other platforms as they come on board. So I think that's the right way to do it. And then you also mentioned about, you know, looking outside of Cardano, we've also seen other platforms. Um, go ahead, go can ahead. Can I touch on that? Uh, th yeah. This is, by the way, an opportunity. That's, that's what I'm saying. So Melt, uh, in this case, pioneering, like, what are the regulatory what what is the regulatory space like it's like a hubble telescope they like it's it's black space nobody knows and then melt comes along and like oh there is this planet it's europe and we can like roll out there so okay uh, 1 million uh, bucks of funds uh, well saved and we go to europe first right that that could be a, a, a way to do it and and this is what i'm saying you know and and melt has no costs when we do it <laughs> And uh, on the other hand, we are going to explore some some stars in the universe, in the black space, uh, which other ones can take advantage of. So it, it, you see what I'm saying, right? This is like a, a very cooperative uh, time in, in uh, time uh, right now. Yeah, I, I think from from the the person who is pioneering, right? They obviously get first dibs and they kind of get to, to to figure things out. There, there's a benefit in the sense of market share, but then everybody else who's coming in after also knows what not to do and what already works and, and doesn't, right? So again, I think it's a win-win and it just, it depends on where you are, but either way, there's something that you can leverage. The other thing that you touched on too was the um, launch of Jed and some of these other assets coming into the Cardano ecosystem. I think right now it's an opportune time with so much fresh liquidity and so many new possibilities coming into the space, right? Like for the longest, we didn't have a stable coin and things were still functioning. <laughs> but now that we do, we have seen Jed go from, I think, about 10 to 11 million all the way now to about 18, 17 or 18 million dollars in terms of TVL 
in just a matter of two to three months. So I think this is just the beginning. The fact that you guys are here from the very bottom up um, will definitely pay dividends. But again, Sven, I want to just thank you so much for your time here. I know we've been going for quite a bit of time and it's nighttime where you're at. So I want to be respectful of that. I want to let you have some dinner, relax and actually enjoy your weekend instead of <laughs> worrying about Florian all the time. Uh, but thank you for jumping on. So my last thing to you is if anybody you know, is just hearing about Forion for the very first time, they're interested in what you guys are doing, maybe they want to get access to the, um, the pre-sale, or maybe they just want to just get in touch with you as a developer to really lend you know, a hand to the team, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you guys and get connected? Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, and uh, it's, it's all good in terms of dinner, so I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to be here still with you. Um, to get in touch with us, I guess Twitter, is the one to follow us for news and everything. And if you really want to go down uh, for discussion parts and stuff, uh, please join our Discord. And uh, there also we are going to announce our token sales there and everything that moves forward, details of timelines and um, um, just about everything is going to happen on Discord. So that's the, the best channel. And um, yeah, I guess, uh, as I said, the community has been very helpful and we want to give back. So if we can do at this stage something for you, let us know as well. Reach out if you want to. Maybe you have good ideas, you want to participate. Please let us know. Uh, get in contact with us. We're very fresh and uh, and um, open for for any yeah anything outside of the community. We're, we 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 have started building the community already. So. Um, be part of it and see us grow. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. We've got Sven Janssen, who's going to be the co-founder of the Forion Network, breaking it down for you guys here. We've touched on so much. We've talked about what they're going to be building, what they're launching, their FRN token, regulatory compliance competition, so many things here. If you guys appreciated this video, please make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, consider subscribing. And if you guys have any questions for me or Sven, then make sure to leave those down below. That said, and as always, again, Sven, thank you so much, and we will see you guys in the next video. Barry, thank you for great questions, great conversation. All the best for you and uh, see you around.